Here's a video to get through project seven. We're gonna walk through some of the technical parts when you're working with Google Sheets and then I'll leave it up to you to write the rest of your paper. The research question is as follows. In general, which is the best predictor for a student's score on the final exam? The score in the first midterm or the second midterm? What is the predicted score of final exam? Somebody who scored 77 on the first midterm and an 88 on the second. So the idea is to use the data in the gradebook data set, which you should be able to download from the project assignment file in Canvas. And there's 105 students to look at. And we have data, uh, the following variables. You got midterm one and two, the difference between the midterms, extra credit, final exam and then what class they are in. Now we're only going to be concerned with midterm one, midterm two, and the final exam and we're going to try to find correlations and so we're going to eliminate some of these other variables. So here's what we want to do. We want to uh, identify the explanatory and response variables and then look for the form, direction, and the strength of the relationship of each of the graphs that we're going to create uh, we're going to um, find the correlation coefficient using Google Sheets and we're going to find uh, the equation of the line using Google Sheets. Okay, so that's the plan. Uh, again, we're only going to do the technical parts and you're going to need to do the write-up for the rest of it. Let's take a look at the data set. Here's Google Sheets. This is a gradebook data set. And if you've download, if you've uh, clicked on the link, you should see this view only, which means I cannot um, do anything in this file. And so I'm going to need to make a copy. So let's make a copy of this file. Go to File, Make Copy, and then I can keep it like that. I want to put it in a folder in my drive that has the Math 190 stuff in it. And then um, you can create another folder or just put it wherever. And then you can name it Gradebook again instead of copy of Gradebook. But that's up to you. You don't need to change this. So now the copy of the Gradebook is there. The, the little red or blue symbol that says read only or file only is gone now. So this is a view only file. This is my actual file. So I'm going to go to the view only and close that because I'm done with that. I have a copy of it. And now that I have a copy in my Google Drive, I want to make sure that I don't mess up any data. And so I'm going to click on this triangle and then ask to duplicate the, the worksheet. And now I have a copy of sheet one. I can just go ahead and change this to project seven or whatever you want. You can leave it. Uh, unchanged. Now I want two graphs or two columns side by side that I'm going to use. I'm not gonna use the difference and the extra credit so I can highlight that left or right click and then let's delete those two columns and I can also delete this class column. So let's click somewhere else, click on D, right click, delete the column. Now, I also want um, to do two different graphs, and I kind of want to separate this. So I'm going to go over here and right-click and insert uh, a column and maybe do this a couple of times. There's this redo button over here that allows you to just click on it so that I can have these two data sets separated. And then the midterm one also has a final exam, should have a final exam associated with it. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it on to here. So now I have two side-by-side -side data with X and Y for the midterm one and the final, and then another side-by-side -side data for the midterm two and the final. All right, <clears throat> now we can do the correlation, uh, the scatter plot. So if I click and drag or click and shift click on A and B or on the midterm one and the final columns, I can go to insert 
chart and then it should automatically uh, the default should automatically be a scatter plot and then uh, I generally want to get rid of this um, um, <clears throat> legend so I go to customize legend none and then now I have a larger area that covers the scatter plot so I'm going to shrink this a little bit and put it down a little bit lower and um, just so I have this available for me later on I'm gonna leave the space the spaces up here so that I can uh, include some data now let's go to midterm 2 in the final and do a scatter plot for that and let's get rid of the legend again and if I shrink this a little bit put it down here with the data set then I have my two scatter plots if you take a look at this the midterm one looks like it's it has a tighter grip on the line than compared to the midterm two all right so we can verify that by finding the correlation coefficient and to find the correlation coefficient uh, we need to uh, do the function corel so for this I'm going to put R equals and then that's just a text to remind me what R is equal to and here I'm actually going to type in the command or the function to find R so the function is going to start with an equal sign and the function name is corel or correlation coefficient corel open parentheses and then it's going to ask me for the y values so I'm going to click on B now I know there's a final header there it says final but since it's a header it's going to ignore that and just focus on the numbers comma and then I'll click on the midterms and then I get a correlation coefficient of 0.885 which is a pretty strong correlation let's do the same correlation coefficient for um, for our next set of data so R equals let's uh, align that to the right so that it's closer to this this value So R equals. Now the command again uh, starts with an equal sign, Corel, open parentheses, and then the Y list, comma, the X list. And then I can see uh, when I looked at the scatter plot, I noticed that the midterm one seemed to have a tighter grip on the line than midterm two and I can see that now with the correlation coefficients 0.885 is closer to one than 0.725 and so I can verify that now next is the equation of the line so the equation of the line is a uh, plus b x so I need values for a and b and just to remind myself a is the y-intercept and b is the slope so if I have those pieces of information I can um, remember that when I write down my equation <clears throat> so my y-intercept uh, it's uh, going to be a function again and functions start with an equal sign and you type intercept and here's the y-intercept of a line derived via linear regression open parentheses now for the r it doesn't really matter which one you do first the x or the y but for the slope and intercept it is very important so I want to make sure that I select the y values first comma and the x values so my y-intercept is 16.417 or 418 and then now my slope it's a command function and I start off with an equal sign and I type slope and then open parentheses the y values comma the x values 
So now my slope is uh, 0.7828, so that's 0.783. Okay. Now I'm going to want the same things over here. Um, here's a little secret if you're putting this information uh, right next to the, the, the data sets you're going to get this automatically figured out for you. Or you can just make sure you type it again. So um, let's double click on it. Let's actually clear that out. And remind ourselves for the y intercept, you type equals intercept, open parentheses, click on the y values, comma, click on the x values, and then you hit enter or close parentheses. And then the slope equals slope, open parentheses, click on the y values, comma, and the x values. Notice so I don't have to click and drag, I just click on the header or on the on the column name uh, column letter and then it's going to get me the whole column all right <clears throat> now um, one more thing to possibly include here is for each of these scatter plots we might be interested in showing off the line so let's uh, click on this and let's edit the chart and if we go to customize and series Uh, it allows us to include some uh, some error bars or data labels. More importantly, the trend line is what we're looking for. So, if we click on the trend line. Um, you're going to see the the line that best fits. So that line is actually this equation: y is equal to 16.418 plus 0.782 or 783 times x. Uh, we'll write that down. Now the line is uh, kind of hard to see, so one way to adjust that is to adjust the opacity, is how opaque or transparent it is, and the larger the opacity, the darker it's going to get. So we can make it 100%, uh, or we can make it just a little bit less than that. And then if you make the line color darker, you can see it a little bit better. So that's how you do the trend line, or the line of best fit. So let's click on the second graph and do the trend line for that as well and make it darker and now we're all set so now let's transfer this information to our um, to our document so in our Google Drive we can uh, create a new document call it Project 7, and then your name. Oops, let's go to the actual document. Type in your name and all the necessary and appropriate headers. And then remember, we always want to start off with our research question. And for this, I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, the actual research question is really this. Uh, the second part is just some extra, an extra question, a couple of questions to ask you uh, to make prediction. So I'm just going to grab the first sentence, and then you can take care of the second sentence. Um, at a different time. So now we want to include our graphs. Now for our graphs, I'm going to want to include the graphs and I want to include the R value and then the table and stuff like that. So um, let's, let's try to set this up in tables. So I'm going to go to insert and then there's a, an option for a table and I'm going to start off with a two by one table. And then what happens is that if you want to include more lines over here, you can just insert another another row. But I'm going to try to squeeze the the graphs in here. This will give me an indication of how small my graphs would be. So while I'm here, 
I'm going to say insert and then we're going to insert a chart and the chart was from our Google Sheets that we created and then uh, it usually gives you the, 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 the first one that pops up would be the last one that you worked on and then here are a couple of charts so I'm going to do the midterm one first and since this was contained in a, in a chart it kept it this small so I didn't have to change the size and that'll allow me to insert my second one without having to adjust the size again <clears throat> now if I hit tab I'm gonna create another another line over here so here I want to report my correlation coefficient and this is given by R and then uh, you can insert a cell if you want but in general I think um, I think we can just go back and copy it so our correlation coefficient for this first midterm is uh, 0 0.8854 and let's go to three decimal places so 0. Point, that's a 0 0.8854 or 885 and then we'll find the correlation coefficient for the next one. If I copy and paste, I don't have to retype everything again. And then I can go back to my sheet and um, get my correlation coefficient uh, 725. 0 0.725. Okay. Now I'm going to create another row and here's where I want to put my equation now generally the equation is y is equal to ax plus b or a plus bx but I'm going to write the words here this is a predicted final and this is going to equal to and it's going to be a plus b times x which is the midterm one score now I'm not going to leave it like this. I need to change my A and my B. And so I just want to put this here as a placeholder for the moment. And now I'm going to jump back to my gradebook and try to figure out what my A was equal to. For midterm one and final, the A was 16.418. So that's uh, 16.418. And then the B was equal to point seven eight three and then now I have my uh, equation of the line and then I can do the same thing over here where I have my a and my B and this is going to be midterm two so my a for midterm two is thirty five point five oh seven And then my B for midterm two is 0.542. All right. So I have my research question. I have my scatter plots. I have my correlation coefficient. I have my uh, predicted value. So you can type the rest of your essay here. And then later on, they ask you another research question or the part two of the research question. And let's take a quick look at that and may want to make sure we include that information. So I'm going to copy the whole thing and paste it and just delete a bunch of stuff. So we answered this research question. Let's get rid of that. And let's call this research question part two. Now, what is the predicted score for somebody who scored a 77 on the final and an 88, a 77 on the first midterm, 88 on the second midterm? So you can answer this one by one if you just split this up. And um,
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, do some copying and pasting. So I can go ahead and answer this piece by piece any way you want to set this up. Uh, I can answer this piece by piece, or I can put this together and answer it all together. Um, but that's basically it. So you got some work to do here, uh, and you got some uh, answering to do here, and then that would be your project. Okay. It would be a good idea to always watch out for the rubric and go through the rubric yourself before uh, submitting it so that you can see what you have missing and what you have included. Uh, a rubric is going to change slightly because I'm going to rewrite a couple of these things, but in general, this is what we're going to be looking for. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, and I hope this gives you enough information to get you through uh, project number seven. Good luck.